Hello everybody, Bradley here, back again with another Civilization 6 tutorial video, and today we are talking all about everybody's favorite wonder, the Kilwa Kisawani. Now I'm not sure how true that is, but ever since the Oracle video came out and we did a deep dive on a wonder, you guys have been asking lots for more wonder deep dives, but to start off, I got the most questions about the Kilwa, how does it work, when should I be building it, what makes it good, what makes it bad, all of those things, so it's time. It is time. It's taken a minute to gather a comprehensive understanding to the point where I feel comfortable making a video about it, but it is time to dive deep into another wonder, and it's the Kilwa today, but let me know in the comments below what you want it to be next time. But let's hop into the game and let's talk about some wonders. Before we get started, just a reminder that we have a Discord server and a Twitch stream, and those links are in the description below. If you want to hang out with over 250 Civ fans in the Discord server, feel free to do that. Also, our Twitch stream is where we play Civ live a few times a week, so if you're watching the YouTube content, you're like, hey, I wish I could watch some of this live. That is where we are doing it. Again, those links are in the description. Additionally, thank you all so much for all of our new subscribers. We recently hit over 4,000, which is absolutely incredible, so thank you, thank you. And again, thank you to our channel members who are supporting the stream directly. If you would like to do that, you can click the join button or find the link in the description. It's helping us really up our game in the channel. Uh, Onvars is here again. Um, we've been able to hire Onvars to edit some of our videos, which has just been amazing. So thank you so much for that. And now let's talk about the, the Kilwa. So anytime we start analyzing a wonder, it's really easy to just get caught in the trap of looking at what it does, looking at, um, looking at the text on the screen and being like, hey, that sounds great, I'm gonna build it. But there's a lot more to wonders uh, than just what they actually do. So let's talk about everything that has to do with what the Kilwa Kisawani doesn't do. So the Kilwa Kisawani comes in right here at Machinery. Why that's important is because Machinery is a place where you're already going anyway. If it came in at Buttresses, rushing up to Buttresses, it's not terrible, but most games you don't need to rush up to Dams or for the Hagia Sophia. So if you're spending your early science coming up here to get the Kilwa, that typically feels bad, right? So you want to pay attention to where these things are coming on the tech tree because that also helps color your decision about whether or not you are going to get them. So Kilwa's coming in here at Machinery. That's not a terrible place to rush. Even if you don't really need Machinery, the worst thing that kind of happens is now you have extra crossbows for defending, especially on Deity. It's not really a terrible place to rush. I'm not usually a fan of industrial zones or building too many, so I don't typically rush up here to Apprenticeship. If I want to grab the Kilwa, I'll typically come to Education. That'll feel great. I'll get some universities. And while that's happening, I'll come back down for Machinery to grab the Wonder so it's in a really good location which is really helpful when you're making the decision to build it because you know you're not going to have to go out of your way to get it and the boost for machinery is to grab three archers which is also easy enough to do if you are trying to rush it it is time to open our trusty friend, the Civlopedia here. And what the Civlopedia tells us is a, is a great many things, but the first thing I want to know is how easy is this wonder to play? So we talked a lot about the Oracle, how it's really, well, what makes it, part of what makes it really good is that you can place it on hills, which is really easy to meet as a requirement. So you have lots of options to place the Oracle. With something like the Pyramids, it's a little bit harder. Whether or not you get the Pyramids early in the early game is kind of just whether or not you get a flatland tile that's a desert tile in your first two cities. It's really hard to create those circumstances and settling a whole city around the pyramids can be a little bit risky. So let's take a look at the Kilwa. It comes in a good spot on the tech tree. Does it have an easy enough placement to also make us feel good about that? So it needs to be placed on desert, grassland, plain, snow, or tundra. So there's a lot of uh, placement options here. They have to be flatland tiles and they must be built on the coast. So this is easy enough to meet, right? In most of your games, even if you don't have any coastal cities, which we actually don't this game, this is a good example, we don't have any coastal cities. Usually you have a city or two cities that, that their tiles are reaching out to the coast. So this is an easy enough wonder to build without actually having to settle your cities around it, which is really great when that happens. Some wonders are worth settling a city around like the Petra can be, but Kilwa is just, it comes in a good spot on the tree. It's easy enough to play Place down that you're gonna have a few different options to really make it great having it be built on the coast there's a few negatives to that right you don't have as much room to district a bunch of theater squares around it or a bunch of entertainment complexes then theater squares so there is a there's a few things that that being on the coast
most isn't ideal for, but it is easy enough to find a tile in a high enough production city to make the kill loss. So, so far, placement in the tree, really good. Um, placement on the map, not the best, but easy enough. So now let's talk about what the kill law actually does. All right, our Lord and Savior, the Civilopedia, is back. A lot of people will build kill law for the three envoys, and that's just the wrong way to approach the kill law, in my opinion. Again, all these videos are just my opinion. If you have a different opinion, that's all good. Um, but I think the three envoys are there to supplement what the Kilwa is really good at. I will see some people, they'll build the Kilwa for the three envoys, and I don't think that's the way you should be looking at the envoys. They're not the main reason to build Kilwa. Um, the main reason is the rest of the ability, but let's start with the three envoys. So three envoys at this point in the game, obviously really good. There's not a whole lot of options for envoys um, kind of coming up to, where are we at here? We're, let's just go exactly. I want to be exact, precise. So we have machinery at the beginning of the medieval era. So by the time you get to the beginning of the medieval era right here, you don't have a ton of envoys. You have a few. Maybe you've used the city-state. Maybe you've moved Amani around. But you don't have loads. So are the three envoys worth building the kill wall alone? Absolutely not. It's a lot of effort for three envoys. But what they are good for is helping you use the kill wall's ability because three envoys at the point in the game you get them is a high percentage of the envoys. If you already have 50 envoys in the game and it's really, really late, adding an extra three isn't that helpful. When you only have four envoys, adding an extra three is just about half. So, so that makes a really big difference. This is where the kill wall gets a little bit complicated, so bear with me, much like the amenities video. Sometimes things are just really hard to explain. When you are the suzerain of a city-state, this city receives a 15% boost to the type bonuses provided by that city-state. So that's the first part. When you are the suzerain of a city-state, the city that the Kilwa Kisiwani is in, so in this case, her name was Lola. This has been renamed. Uh, we did this on a Twitch stream if you want to stop by. It's a good time. Right, so anytime we get that bonus, when we suze a city-state, we get a 15% bonus of that type to the city here. What that means is if we are the suze of a single science city-state, then we get a 15% bonus here. If we are the suze of a single culture city-state, then we get a 15% boost to culture here. So the boost is just tied to what it gives you. It doesn't make any distinction between different city-states of the same type. So we have Nalanda here and Fez. If I suze either one of these first, I'll get that 15% science boost here, but it doesn't matter which one. It doesn't take into account their specific abilities. It just takes into account what type they are and whether or not you're the suzerain of them. Now, most of these track pretty easily, but it does get a little complicated. So again, bear with me. Um, for the science city-states, the boost is science. For the gold city-states, the boost is gold. For the culture and faith city-states, the boost is culture and faith. Where it gets a little bit tricky is around production. So when it comes to typing and boosts, uh, production gets a little tricky here. So we have military city-states. Do I have any in this game? Think Akkad, think Kabul. Think Valletta. We do have Valletta here. So if I suze Valletta, which I am the suze of Valletta. So Valletta gives me a production boost, but just towards units. So if I have the suze of Valletta here, I get the 15% boost, just like I would with any of the other city-states. But I don't get it towards production, towards everything, just towards units for a military city-state. Now, I don't have any in the game, but if you are the Suze of an industrial city-state, like Mexico City, the orange ones, then your boost to production will be for pretty much everything that's not units. So wonders, districts, buildings, those types of things. So the production gets split up. For military city-states, your boost will be towards units. For industrial city-states, your boost will be pretty much everything else, but not towards units. If you want to know if you are getting this 15% boost, just to kind of check in and make sure it's working for you, we are the Suze of multiple science city-states, so we'll leave that alone for now. But we are the Suze of a single a culture city-state and a single a military city-state. So I should be getting a 15% boost here towards units and a 15% boost towards culture. You can always slide down here and check. 
I'm using a mod to make this a little bit clearer. It doesn't change the game or anything, just makes all of this look a, a little neater. But we are getting 25% here from modifiers at the bottom. 10% of that is because we are Maya and that's just her ability. But the other 15% of that is coming from the city state, the culture city state we're sused of. And we have plus 15% towards units here because we are the Sus of a militaristic city state. So I hope that's uh, enough information for you guys to understand how the first two parts of the kill wall work. We have the envoys, pretty simple. Um, just about valuing them is a little bit tricky. Um, then we get a 15% boost to the type bonuses provided by a single city state you're the Suze of, and that happens in the kill wall city. Now it gets really crazy. If you are the Suzune of two or more city-states of that type, an additional 15% boost is given to all your cities. Must be built on a flat tile adjacent to coast. We already talked about the coast bit, but now we're talking about boost to multiple cities. So we are the Suzerain of three scientific city-states here. What that means is we are going to get our boost in her name with Lola, our 15% science boost here. Um, because the Kilwas here, we are Suze of one science city-state. But now that we add more, now that we've added a second or a third, um, we are going to get that boost in all of our cities. So if we go to all of our cities now, we should see the science boost because we are the Suze of multiple science city-states. We should not see the unit boost because we are not the Suze of multiple military city-states. That that boost will only happen here. If I go and check in Peepo Fat here, just the pinnacle of city names, you guys are hilarious. We are indeed getting that 15% bonus because we have multiple science city states. And so we are getting it here and we are getting it in all our cities and we can check that. 25%, 10 because we're the Maya, 15 because of the Kilwa, but I'm not getting the 15% unit bonus here because we only have one military city state. So I'm hoping now you guys understand how the kill wall works. So if you're if you're query about the kill wall, just how does it work? I hope that kind of answers all of those questions for you. Now you can see the potential to really make it amazing. If you are getting multiple city states of a specific type and you can get bonuses to all of your cities, well now things start to get crazy. So when you're thinking about, should I build the Kilwa, there's a few things to keep in mind. The first is that typically your Kilwa city, because of its need to put this on the coast tile, typically isn't one of your better cities. It's not usually not one of your worst. Most of your worst cities aren't usually building wonders because of production problems. But the Kilwa city is not the reason you build it typically. If we take a look at this unit bonus, that's an extra four production. It's meaningful. It's not loads. If I take a look at this culture bonus, that's an extra, what is that, one culture we're getting. So it's not, we're not talking about huge numbers here we're getting in the actual Kilwa city. But if we look at our capital here, with the science, we're getting, what is that, half of that. We are getting 10 science per turn from the Kilwa bonus right now in our capital city. So the first couple of things you want to take into account are the bonuses you can get to all your cities because your Kilwa city typically isn't going to make the best use of those bonuses early. The next thing you should think about is what bonuses am I getting and are they helpful for a victory condition? It does take time to go out of your way to build the Kilwa. It takes time, it takes production, and it's not always great. What made the Kilwa very desirable for me this game is that I had three science city-states completely by accident. This game we played with sci our city-states just randomized, and so completely by accident here, three science city-states, and we were going for a science victory with a sieve that's very good at science. So I know I'm going to have a lot of science in my empire, so a 15% boost to all my cities is absolutely massive, and then that boost is even better because we're suzerain science city states if this boost was a gold boost gold is nice 15% gold in all of my empire is nice but that means I'm not using my envoys for science city states so I'm actually losing out twice I'm losing out on the Kilwa bonus right but I'm also losing out on the science city states in the first place so Kilwa works best when the city states you're able to get multiple suzerains of are the same type that you really need for a victory. Think Eleanor with culture. Man, that would be amazing. Think Mansa Musa with gold. Something that really adds to what you're already trying to do is when Kilwa shines the most. So just keep that in mind. And like I said, this is a subjective thing. Maybe I didn't say that. Maybe I'm just saying this for the first time. This is all a subjective thing. This is just my opinion. That's not to say there's never a game where skipping the science city states and going for the gold bonus 
wouldn't be a good idea. It's just that most of the time, if you're thinking about building Kilwa, you want to make sure you can get the bonuses to all your cities, or at least one of the bonuses to all your cities. And then, is that bonus really going to help you? Because if you're putting your all of your envoys into faith city-states, right, and that's not going to help you win, right, then it's kind of a waste to build the Kilwa. Also keep in mind the kill was not really efficient if you just have a bunch of single bonuses. Yes, having one city with 15% science, 15% culture, 15% gold can be really amazing. It's just not usually the most ideal situation to build the Kilwa. Again, not to say that's never a good idea to get the Kilwa if you're only getting the single bonuses in your city or in the one city, but it's just to say Kilwa usually works best when you're getting a really good bonus with city-states you already want to put your envoys into for your victory condition. So this game here is kind of the best of all worlds. Now in some games you can just, you have so many envoys, let's say you're playing Owls of Minerva, you're trading with all the city states if you can get two science two culture two gold and then it then it's almost always worth building right so in this game we only had enough envoys to seize a couple of city states and we picked the science ones which makes the kill amazing but we actually had to make that choice if you're playing owls of minerva or you have another way of just getting a load of envoys and you're getting a, you're getting a couple different bonuses to all your cities those bonuses don't even have to be that efficient right if you're getting the culture bonus the gold bonus the faith bonus and a production bonus but not the science one in a science game it's probably still worth building so to summarize the kill was complicated the math can sometimes be complicated but i hope that gave you a, a good understanding of when you should or shouldn't build the kill wall. it's not as black or white as the oracle i think you should build the oracle in any game you can you can easily make the most out of it it's fantastic the kill wall can be amazing it just it requires a little bit of thought as to how you're going to use your envoys what city states are available this is also better in the barbarian clans mode because you can almost guarantee in a barbarian clans game that you will be getting a, a variety of city-state types to sue, so you don't have to worry about hopping into a game and missing out on a science or a culture one. Again, Killwa also gets a lot better if you are selecting your city-states. If you're going into the game, you know it's going to be a science victory, you know you've put six science city-states in your game, then the Killwa is going to be amazing for you to build it and give it a try. If you just wanted to try the Killwa out, that's the scenario I would use to, to give that a go. We are now at the end of the game. It was a really fun one. As you can see, we got GDRs flying around. I'm sure we have nukes. Yeah, we have nukes being built. We played this a couple weeks ago. Like I said, though, the live stream is such a good time. Please come and hang out. This is a game you definitely missed if you weren't there. But let's take a look at what the kill was doing for us late in the game. So you have to keep in mind, we recently discovered a lot of these city states. So we're almost at the culture bonus in all our cities. Um, we haven't quite got our initial production bonus or faith bonus yet. So we're mainly still talking about the science one. But Kilwa was still doing a lot of work for us. In this city, we are getting around nine, eight to nine science here. In this city, we are getting, oh Jesus, we are getting around 15 to 20 here. In this city here, we are getting around six to seven. And so as you can see, all of that adds up. I'd say out of my 1,279, can I actually see how much is from? Do, 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 do. No, it doesn't. It doesn't say that at all. That's unfortunate. What I can do is some quick handy dandy math so and just tell you what 15% of 1279 is. Oh boy, I'm such an idiot. Uh, 191. So the Kilwa throughout this game is giving me 191 science per turn. So keep in mind that is a ramped up number, right? When we looked at the earlier save, when we had just built it, it was not giving us 191. That number kept getting higher and higher and higher. But as we were going through the game, getting an extra 70 per turn, then 80 per turn, then 90 per turn, really adds up. And because you are building the kill wall early in the game here at Machinery, the time of the game, like if we're talking about a whole game, right? Kill wall comes in around here. You still have a big chunk of the game to play with the kill wall adding up. So in this game, I would say that the kill wall was incredible for us. It did a lot of work. I would not have built it though, if I couldn't guarantee getting two or more science city states. So like I said, it's not a wonder that you should build every single game, 
but it can be fantastic if you're looking at the city states and you're like hey these are city states i really want anyway uh they are going to help my victory condition and i can keep them that's the part i forgot to mention you have to be able to keep the city states if there's like eight amanis in there from all the other all the other empires and you might lose the suzerain that makes your bonus really really shaky you want to make sure that's a bonus you are keeping for the whole game in any case, I think that does it for this Killwa tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I took this suggestion straight from you guys. So if you have any other suggestions for videos, I obviously can't get to all the comments or all the suggestions, but I'd love to see them in the comments below. Onvars also has his eyes. Oh, he's the editor. Hi, Onvars. Uh, he also has his eyes in the comments to look for feedback on the videos and things like that. So between us, if we see anything cool that we want to do, um, uh, hopefully we can do that for you. So put all your suggestions there. Again, we have a bunch of links in the description. Go check out all the things. YouTube, you're already on YouTube. <laughs> Go check out the Twitch, the Discord. Uh, if you'd like to become a channel member, that's there as well. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.